This video was made possible by you. If you want to save time and support what I do, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for what we're creating in this video, as well as other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. Welcome back to designing a website in Figma. Over the course of this series, we have been designing a website for a fictional app. When it comes to the brand, this is basically the only thing that we have. We have just the logo placeholder and then we have some colors, maybe some fonts. But I was thinking that maybe we could take some time to try and come up with a logo for our fictional app. And I thought that we might use AI, specifically ChatGPT, to get some ideas. Now, I'm fairly sure that the quality of the logo coming from AI is not going to be very good. But at the same time, I think it's going to provide a good starting point for us. So at the very least, what I do expect is going to be good quality could be the app name. So since ChatGPT is a large language model, it is very good with words and with names and so on. So I think it's possible that it is going to create a cool name for our app. Now, if I remember correctly, I think this fictional website, this fictional app that we are creating a website for is note taking. Yes, of course, all the text and all the images are very generic. So let's also think about if that's actually the direction we should take. Because, for example, we have a case studies page. Having a case studies page implies that this is going to be a B2B as well as a B2C app, meaning companies as well as individuals can use it. Now, I'm not sure if a simple note-taking app is somehow likely to deliver any quantifiable results for a company, which makes me think that we could actually, instead of a note-taking app, we could do project management app, some kind of a productivity app, maybe something like project management, something like that. I think that's something that's very common and there is a lot of different apps for and it's something that can be used by an individual as well as a company so i think we're gonna pivot a little bit into productivity or task and project management right and with that in mind why don't i try and come up with a prompt for ai why don't we go something like design a logo for an app used for project slash task management, end of sentence. The logo should have a symbol icon on the left and the company name on the, and the app name, app name on the right. Additionally, additionally, think of a name for such an app that you will then use in this logo. Make it modern, understandable, easy to remember. Keep in mind that people from all around the world and therefore all languages are going to potentially use it, which means the name should be easily pronounceable is that the right word? For most of the world. Provide reasoning. And also, we could also say keep the logo modern, but timeless at the same time. The icon doesn't necessarily have to be visually related to note taking. It could be abstract. So what I'm thinking here is that I'm hoping that ChatGPT is going to suggest a design or suggest generate an image of the logo that we can then use to improve that logo and to actually use that in our design. All right, so let's see what it comes up with. I've also added the name should be short. So let's see if that's going to... Let's just see what it does. All right, error in message stream. Do you like this personality? 
Mm, I'm personally go for no because I don't think this is very useful. Please try again. Hmm, something seems to have gone wrong. It is correct. Let me try and refresh the page. Let me try and start a new chat actually. Okay, create an image. Let's go. Okay. We're not getting anywhere, it seems. I'm just gonna do this in my private chat. So I'm gonna take this off screen for a little bit. All right, and this is what the AI came up with. Please meet Kivo. It also provided some reasoning for this decision. So let's go through it. Why Kivo works, short and catchy. That's true. Just four letters and two syllables. Globally pronounceable Kivo uses a crisp, familiar sounds found in most languages positive tone. The word feels energetic and uplifting without tying you to any single language or meaning. Two softly rounded squares overlap and rotate to create a subtle checkmark arrow in the negative space. Now, I don't think it, that is necessarily what's going on here, but that doesn't matter. You can see that it's only one rounded square. A gentle tilt, deep blue gradient keeps it fresh yet professional. Wordmark, right? Set in a clean geometric sans serif, the round O balances the sharper K for a friendly modern feel. I do like that, yes. Overall styling. Flat, minimal geometry ensures the mark stays timeless and scales well from app icon to billboard. That's true, yeah. The transparent background lets you drop it onto light or dark UI themes without tweaks. That's pretty, that's a good point, okay. Let's try that, let's actually see if that's the case. Let me create a dark background for this logo. Oh, I see, it was just talking about the transparent background. Yes, of course, but the gradient seems to work on light as well as dark background, so that's pretty nice. That is pretty nice. We might change colors later, I don't know, but I actually do like these colors. I think I'm gonna keep them. Feel free to try alternate color pairs indigo, violet, or emerald navy while keeping the low contrast gradient and simple shapes. All right, so as I suspected, this is pretty good in terms of the name and the overall idea. I think, yeah, I think I like that. It's, it's nice, I think it's a good idea. But in terms of the visuals, I don't think it's quite there yet because for example, if you take a look at this check mark, it, it doesn't look very balanced inside of the centered, inside of the square, so I think we might have to fix that. I also think it's disproportional when it comes to the size. I think it should be smaller, similar size to the text, but let's see. What I'm thinking is that we could try two more versions from the AI and see what it comes up with. All right, so let's, let me just... All right, so this is the second alternative the AI came up with. I see that it's still keeping the IVO structure of the name. I think it's pre that's pretty cool. I think I like that. So it, it provides similar reasoning, like two straightforward syllables, easy in most languages. Okay, two interlocking rounded lozenges. Am I even pronouncing that right? Overlap at 45 degrees, carving away a subtle upward pointing arrow. I don't know about the arrow, but I do like this shape. And I do like these colors, actually. I think this is pretty nice. Again, the style, it's similar reasoning to what it provided here. So I do kind of like that. And here's the third option that we got from ChatGPT. So now we have three alternatives. I think they are all pretty nice. I think we can work with this as a starting point. So let's see what's the reasoning provided here. Why Prio or Prio hits the mark. Instant meaning evokes priority. That's true. And prioritize. That's pretty good for task management. I do like that. I'm going to highlight that actually. Perfect for task management. That's true. Short and universal. Brandable. Unique enough for trademarks and easy to turn into a verb. Prio it. That's also True, I can see that happening potentially, right, in a world where this actually is a popular app. So I guess that's pretty nice. Again, it describes the logo concept. Now, as you can see, if you compare these two, they are very similar, right? So we do get a check mark inside a rounded shape. I kind of like how this is darker than, than the surroundings. It looks like a checkbox in both cases, to be completely honest with you. But at the same time, I really am a huge fan of this potentially, I think we can come up 
with an angular gradient, right? So if I were to just very quickly sketch out what I'm thinking could be done here, these corners would be rounded fully. Then of course these corners, all of them would be also rounded fully actually. 20, more than 20, like that. Then let's do union, let's do an angular gradient. So this is what I'm potentially seeing here. And I would have to spend more time on, on this definitely because this is not looking good. But yeah, potentially some kind of a, like a gradient play with the angular gradient. Maybe, I don't know, one of those could be like, let's do a radial one on this one. I'm just brainstorming here, right? So I would definitely have to spend more time on this, but I do like these colors. I think I'm gonna go with a combination of these somehow, but we will see about the visual details. I think, let's take a look at other, all, all these, the alternatives and let's see if there's any reasoning. So positive connotation echoes in terms of second version, livo, levo, echoes live, lively, evolve, hinting at progress and momentum. Okay, that's pretty nice also, but kind of generic. So I think in terms of the name, Prio or Prio stays at the top for me because again, it's perfect for task management. That's true. Kivo, the word feels energetic and uplifting without tying you to any single language or meaning. Yes, that is true. But again, this is too generic. So in terms of the name, I would say this one is too generic, too generic, too generic, too generic, good name, good name. So what I'm thinking is I think I'm going to go for Prio in terms of the name because it's good for prioritizing. This is good both for a note-taking app as well as a productivity or project management app. Now, the problem is, it's not a problem for us, but if you're creating a name for your app, this is going to be a fictional app. This is going to be a fake brand. There is no, it's basically just for the purpose of this website template. However, with these simple names, it's oftentimes an issue when you get a similarly or identically named company, such as, for example, this one. As you can see, we got prio.com, and that's probably not the only company out there that uses this name. And since this seems to be an app as well, I'm not sure if I would necessarily go for Prio if this were a real app, because you can see there is already a different app called Prio. So with super simple names, this is oftentimes an issue. And it could potentially also get you into legal trouble if it's, of course, I'm no lawyer, but I think that if, there, if it's like a trademark or if it's like a trademarked word or if it's, a, if it's copyrighted the name somehow, if we were building an actual app, this would be a problem, but not in this case. All right, so as you can see, ChatGPT provided us with three pretty solid concepts. It is not quite there yet in terms of visuals, I think. It provided quite good reasoning. So working with AI like this for creative concepts and starting points is, I think, at this current moment, the best way to integrate AI into your workflow as a designer. So I don't think it's gonna fully take over the design craft, but as of this moment, it is working great as, a, as an idea maker or a brainstorming buddy or a junior designer, right? But if you wanna design something that is really high value add, like a brand or a design in general, then you're gonna need seniority, definitely. Now that might change, of course, it is evolving super quickly, but that is, that is where I think AI best integrates into your workflow right now. So in the next video, we're gonna take these concepts and we're gonna start designing an actual logo, make it polished, make it look really good. But my overall impression is, it did not design a new logo for us, but it provided a very solid starting point based on our prompt, right? So 
Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, I would appreciate you leaving a like. Stay tuned for the next episode of the web design series. You can of course download the source file for this web design using the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.